Oh, whatever, whoever. Dead body. Judging by that twitching and gurgling, it's not, at least not fully dead or there's something inside it. Greetings, denizens of the interwebs. I'm Lord Akantos. Welcome back to Stasis. Last time we left John as we got stuck a bit, though we learned that um, rupture in the fluid tanks would cause a system security systems reset, which is probably what we'll need to um, accomplish in order to maybe unlock the freight elevator door down here. And um, yeah, I realized when I went to bed that night later, suddenly that um, there's the drill, the neural drill on that robotic arm that we haven't managed to get off it. And um, started wondering about the power fuse box, a uh, uh, power breaker box here, that is we can uh, overload the grid to cause power to go out completely from this room. Maybe that's the way to get this uh, arm to stay extended. If we extend it first, then we go trigger the, trigger the power. Wrong one, prep. I don't think it matters. Let's take Product spinal tagging, just because that sounds so much fun. Okay, because I started thinking that there's no actual puzzle here to like, you know, adjust power levels to get power to go to certain areas or devices. So what other reason would there be for this grid overload thing to be here, aside from The fuck? This didn't happen last time. Um, power seems to be on, so I... Okay. Didn't quite go as I hoped it would go. Hmm. Or do we need to then choose a specific one for this to work, or... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Really? That's kind of... Um... Yeah, okay. I guess now we're getting the drill. I think this we can use to actually pierce the fluid tanks high speed neural drill so i kind of had the right idea at one point when i was for the hell of it trying to use the glass shard on the tanks in a way just <laughs> wrong equipment but yeah that was a bit um if it really was that we needed to use the specific option from the prep for the grid overload to actually happen it's kind of silly now, does it matter which one we drill through? To turn the game volume a bit down from my headset because it sounds really loud in my ears right now. Psst, okay. Attention, system rebooted. Air scrubbers activated. Finally, some good news. Oh. The rebooted monitoring system is slowly cycling and checking each subsystem. Okay, so... Got that done, we'll still have the drill. Let's see... Nope, okay. Let's see what happened outside this chamber. Can we now access the uh, fright lift? Oh yes, it's unlocked. Bathed in a soft green light. Okay, now we save. And go to controls. Run, John, run. Aha. Uh -huh. P storage 2. Probably storage 3. Guessing it won't work. Nope. And service lobby 1 and 2. Okay. Storage 2 seems to work. 
Let's go there first. Elevator music. Mm -hmm. Attention, product storage two. Access to product storage two is denied until further notice. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we can't enter here. Yeah, we can't. The door doesn't open. Now let's look around what we can see at least here first. Spinning red hologram indicates that the door is locked, indeed. In the absence of a signal, the screen flickers endlessly. Abandoned heavy loaders sit huddled together like old pack dogs at the end of a long run. I don't see anything else really so okay no product storage too at this point then guess we'll try lobby one ah uh, this is starting to trigger ptsd is it i was just queuing on the phone for nearly half an hour today listening to goddamn fucking elevator music ah uh, now this Attention, service platform one. Please check in with the duty officer before engaging with any products. Well, that sounds weird. Okay, there's a portal. The room on the other side of the observation portal has a single bed in the center surrounded by life support machinery. Mm -hmm. Beyond this observation portal stands an empty room containing a single chair. Children's toys lie in the room seen through the observation portal. A teddy bear is soaked in red fluid, its matted hair plastered to the hard metal floor. Yummy! Oh! What are they doing here? Dirt cakes the inside of the glass observation portal here. And there's a flickering light. I'm trying to. Can I distinguish what's. I think I'm probably seeing things, but it's kind of like there could be a skeleton lying down. Probably not. It's probably just some cabling or whatever. Smeared blood makes it impossible to see into the room beyond this portal. How quaint. Oh, lots of body bags. The outline of a human adult can be seen in this body bag. Oh, outline of a child. Yeah, and the second one, two child-sized body bags lie very close to one another as if for warmth. I hope they weren't alive still when they were closed into those body bags. An adult-sized body bag lies abandoned on the floor. It appears to be full. Mm. It's a good thing it's not vacant. Swaths of blood obscure the room beyond this glass. And this glass is plastered with what can only be dried blood. Yes, very crimson. There's a biometric terminal, requ access door requires a handprint to unlock it. Now I just started hearing in my head from Spaceballs, handprint identification please. And this corpse has something probably, I doubt that's a flashlight. Clara Daniels, general nurse, biome labs, personal data tag and security level one. Okay. Reading time. Let's see the entries then. New job. When Mike suggested I go and work in product storage, I honestly thought he was nuts. I mean, the pay is great and the hours are fantastic, but the job, well, I think it'll be boring. Apparently, the only time a nurse is ever needed is when they crack a stasis tube open, which Robert, the admin officer, said hardly ever happens. Nine times out of ten, they just take the pods directly to the different projects. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to open one soon. Tomorrow is the first time. Tomorrow I actually get to do some work that doesn't involve monitoring vital signs. We're opening a pod for Dr. Isaacs in Project Kitchen Knife. They said they need a specimen who is fully awake. These pods are filled with prisoners and drifters. I wonder if that was one of the specimens who's still fully awake in Project Kitchen Knife. 
Sounds oh so wonderfully rusty and dull considering the setting here, this dirty industrial facility. Uh, they had their chance at a productive life and ruined it all. And you would know how exactly. Damn drifters. Yesterday was much harder than I'd imagined. When we opened the pod, the woman inside had no idea where she was. I'm aware that long-term stasis can cause disorientation, but she kept screaming for her husband, saying they were on their way to holiday on Europa. The doctor quickly sedated her and gave her a vocal cord numbing agent to stop the screaming. I mean, she was obviously lying about being a holiday maker. These drifters will say anything to get out of this situation. <clears throat> I wonder if this nurse ever came to her senses. More prisoners. We got another two products in this morning. Transfers from a penal colony on Earth. I asked to have a look at their files, hoping that it would make this a little easier. But I was told that all records are sealed. I wonder why. He didn't even scream. Now we're talking. I had to delete the last few logs. I read them over again, but they were just too painful. I can still hear the crying of the last man we thought out. He didn't even scream. He sat on the bed, crying, until the doctors came in. They tagged him and took him down to the labs. He didn't even scream. There must be a mistake. Yesterday we opened up a pod with a ten-year-old boy in it. There must have been some sort of mistake. Even if he was a drifter, he's a child. His name is Neil. He's in, in re rehabilitation downstairs. I asked to go and visit him, but was told that it would be easier for me if I just let things be. Seeing how she's here, I don't think she left, let things be in the end. Leaving product storage. I want out of product storage. I requested a transfer to the biomes. I think hydroponics will cheer me up. The pay isn't as good, but at least I'll be able to sleep at night. And follows. Biomes. Not what I thought. I heard the department heads talking about getting something from product storage. They already have four unopened stasis pods in the lab, but they're looking for a subject that can respond immediately. This isn't right. Not just a hydroponics bay. They're using products from product storage too. I thought this was just a hydroponics bay. What the hell would they need human specimens for? Sarah told me that there are more children in the rehabilitation centers under product storage. I'm going there tonight. These security lockdowns have been happening more frequently. I'm going to use them to my advantage. Tomorrow I'm going to get those kids out of here. Today is the day and the last entry. And judging by the body bags, maybe these are people she tried to get out. I'm leaving these entries on this PDA so that if I disappear, you'll know what happened. Whoever's reading this, you need to help. Please help those children. Yeah, I don't think there was anyone here to help. Yeah, she didn't fare so well. Let's see this biometric terminal. I mean, okay, now she, now he tried it. Biometric handprint not recognized. The mortuary requires level five security access. Mortuary, nice. So that's why the body bags are here. But if her corpse is here, based on the, how the feet look, I think she's lying face down. But, yeah. Okay, I don't think we can get in there since... Uh, John is definitely doesn't seem to be willing to take her hand, that's for sure. Not sure if it would work. Maybe she didn't have access there. Maybe that's why she ended up here. Hard to say, but I guess we'll try the next floor. See what... Horrific things we'll find in Service Lobby 2.
Not the elevator music I was waiting for. It sounded like something got squashed or torn apart by the elevator starting to move. Almost. Delicious, crunchy sounds. It's just getting colder. Yeah, looking at this place, I'm not sure if all these um, quality of life um, systems are fully running all over the place anymore. Let's look around a bit. There's a service elevator door. Yeah, that's what it says above, clearly. A flickering light highlights the scratches on the elevator door. Some of the scratches look like they were made by bare nails across the paint. Great. The yellow paint on of the of this service elevator door flakes to the ground. A spinning red hologram. Yeah, yeah, because it's locked. The yellow metal door to this service elevator is locked in place. Service platform two. We can continue forwards down here. Nothing. Hello? Someone there? Where'd that come from? Did it come from behind the service elevator door here? Let's save and see. I just started wondering, does this take us to actually the save load menu? Yes, it does. That'll be a faster way to one click or button press less to get to the save. Let's examine this door or use it, whatever, interact. Could she be behind this one? Okay. We remind you that this is a non-smoking platform. Tampering with, disabling or destroying the laboratory smoke detectors have your PDT hard copy identification ready. Mandatory scans are to be enforced. Okay. I guess not. Let's try again. See if we get anything different. Probably not. Nope, nothing. Let's try this in case she was behind one of these locked doors. Is that a kid calling for their mom? Or just some weird ass squealy noises? Okay, nothing. That's uh, really like the um, art design of this um, station or ship, whichever this is. Oh, whatever, whoever. Dead body. Judging by that twitching and gurgling, it's not, at least not fully dead or there's something inside it. The stench of decomposition wafts your way thanks to the languid spin of the fan. There's a large locked metal door. Blood streaks. The subject lost most of its blood before reaching its resting spot. So it came from the rapid transport system. I'm guessing. Or they. Exposed human fat catches the light as blood flows freely onto the cold metal floor. The static of a radio signal and a faint voice echo out from under the corpse. Okay, judging by that description, this can't be the woman's voice we heard because this is talking about a faint voice echoing out. Wouldn't we hear it back there? If it's really faint, I wouldn't call it faint if we can, but let's see. <laughs> Mm, John doesn't have a stomach for. There she is. It did come from the radio, and I'm guessing this is Yuri. This glob of exposed human fat. <laughs> um. I'm guessing this is the radio system in this place that is playing muffled from somewhere. Let's examine. See if we can take the radio. radio signal through cloud suit. Oh. Would it get amplified? Uh, uh, hello? Is anyone there? Who is this? Identify yourself. My, um, my, my name is, is John. 
Mar Maracek. Uh, I'm... John? How did... Never mind. It's Yuri there. I'm sorry. He's been... He's dead. Shit. Listen to me, John. No, wait. Who are you? My name is Pear Hensley. I'm a botanist in hydroponics. I know you have questions, but right now, you need to get to the track. I'm not going anywhere until you explain to me what the hell is going on. Because you're still there. Get to the track and I'll tell you everything. Holy shit, some of the <clears throat> dialogue volume is a bit bit too quiet compared to the rest. Too bad the game. That's one area where the game lacks. There isn't really any proper volume adjustment, especially since it's in the uh, in an outside config file or executable. Can't adjust it in game, sadly. But oh well, uh, we'll manage. Mm. And yeah, the atmosphere is also another thing I really like currently. This uh, ambient <laughs> noises and sounds in this um, mist and just everything comes together really nicely. Uh, let's save. I'm not sure if this game has like um, not combat but death state, you know, if it's possible to die in the game or fail to get a game over as such. So Usually not a thing in point and clicks, but you never know. These crates hold nothing of use. It's good that you can tell just from the outside without peeking in. Or even grabbing them and shaking them. To try and feel their presence. The warning lights are mercifully unaccompanied by a siren. Okay, we can enter that huge door I guess next. Do not move. Or not. Attention, tram terminal access will be granted once biological containment protocols have completed. Tell me where I am. Wait, aren't you a crew member? A crew member? No. I don't know how I got to this place. What's the last thing you recall? Uh, my, my wife and daughter, we, we, we were on our way to Titan. And then I woke up here. That's it. I can't remember anything else. I heard rumors of Kane Corporation hijacking civilian transports and bringing them here. Where is here? The Groom Lake. It's a medical research ship. Okay, so we're in a ship. Kane, why would they need a ship for research? They have dozens of facilities. Human experimentation. Fringe studies. Here, they can do, well, anything. What? My wife, my daughter. I need to find them. Now. I have a feeling John would be better off not finding this family. Biological scans are inconclusive. That doesn't sound good. That's just because there was that um, bit of dialogue there. This can't be skipped. Let's save just in case something happens so we won't have to go through it again. Spinning extraction fan, spin, pulling stale air through the metal vents. This one's spin, slowly sucking air deep into the ventilation pipes. This is a tram that is powered down. The tram sits dead on the track. There's a computer terminal for the tram system that emits a slight electrical hum. In a closed breaker box, tram charging system written across the front of the metal box. A sturdy metal lock sits on the side of the cover, keeping the breaker box closed. I think we might have a use for the drill again. Maybe this is a bit... Can we move here? Yeah, we can. wasn't exactly clear because it basically goes off screen for a bit, but... Um... Let's try the terminal first. Product storage and processing end of line. Power level, I guess, is bad. Recharge tram. Charging system inactive. Uh, tram line 2 active. Tram line 1 out of order. 
switch tramline. Tram cannot change tracks while power levels are below 60%. Okay. What was that? Beep. Let's check the breaker box. Can you open it? Nope. Okay. Let's drill it open. Damn, that's not gonna work. Well, you could drill through a probably pretty thick fluid tank considering what it needs to keep inside it, but you can't drill through a lock. That's a lock. Okay. Shit towel. I can't see it working like that. I just I just wanna swipe everything with that shitty towel. You know? Mm. Can we get into the tram? Oh yes we can. Okay, let's go take a look inside the tram at this point. Might be something here. Oh the tram looks dark. It's got no power. Take a look around. There must be a way to get it up and running. Okay. Alright. I'll, I'll see what I can find. Or it was the thing that we need to enter here to get this bit of dialogue and stuff and then go back and we can open it. Let's see. Seating. The trams offer a offer of ample seating feels perverse at the moment. A lot of things heal heal here feel perverse at the moment. Not the least of John himself running around butt naked carrying a shitty towel with him. Mm. But there's nothing else here to inspect, so to speak. Let's take a seat. Let's clean them with the mm, shit towel. Probably not a good idea. No shit. Pun intended, very much so. Okay, let's <clears throat> try this again now. Let's use the terminal again. Maybe we'll need to get dialogue. No? Okay. Let's try this now then. Use the drill on yourself, John. Drill yourself. Damn, that's not gonna okay. work. Nope. That's not the answer. Maybe I'm missing something in the surroundings here. Maybe we'll need to break the fans or something. I don't see anything else. Nothing catches my eye, at least. Neither of them. Can we get a hand from someone? I mean, this is the only thing we have. Yuri Leonov, botanist. <coughs> oh, wait. Good job, whoever did the folding. This <laughs> love this <laughs> love this sound effects. Severed hand. Okay. I wonder if we can use this to get through that mortuary door. Took me a while to realize. I'm probably spending like ten minutes running back and forth, and then thought of, hmm, I do have something sharp. Let's try to see if we can get a hand from somewhere. Is there any way to open these? Body bags, by the way. Why didn't John open? Oh wait, I didn't think I tried interacting with them. I just hovered ov over them. Uh, judging from the toe tag, this body had already been processed by some departmental facility. Okay, and we got an electronic tool tag. Okay, let's um, examine all the rest then, I guess. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. The dead child's eyes stared directly at you as if in recrimination. Yeah. <clears throat> Next one. And I guess in the end we'll try the glass shard on each of these. Something like this. Oh god. The body of a child. 
You almost feel guilty with a flood of relief when you realize it's not your own. I mean, who wouldn't, honestly, you know, feel in this kind of situation? Well, let's open the last one. What the f Security holograms are still working. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. Fuck. The airtight enclosure of the body bag has made it difficult to judge how long this corpse has been lying here. And then, of course, Daniel now gets no description anymore. We can still use, but... Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, now this is working weird. No, oh well, Clara Daniels. Okay. Wait, we lost the glass shard when we took the hand from Yuri. Okay, then we won't go mutilating these corpses. Let's see. Shall, can the botanist's hand open the door to the mortuary? Access granted. Welcome, Yuri Linov. Yes. The morgue. And you're just gonna leave that hand there? It might be useful later, John. Come on, John. Uh, can't expect everything from him, I guess. Okay, save. And that, ladies and gents, is where we shall leave John. To stare into the open doorway to the morgue. While we take a rest moment of respite. Thanks for watching. Hoping you have a great day and or night. See you next video. We remind you that this is a non-smoking platform. Tampering with, disabling or destroying the lavatory smoke detectors have your PDT.